without any further ado, I want to bring on my guest tonight uh, for the section of the show that we call Office Hours, where we have conversations, one-on-one -on -one conversations with all kinds of people. Sometimes it'll be you, sometimes it'll be live questions from the audience, and sometimes it'll be a guest from outside the audience. Well, today, I want to bring in a brother. Uh, his name is Danny Shaw. Uh, Danny Shaw is a professor. He has many jobs, many titles, everything from scholar to boxer. But Danny Shaw is a is a scholar in the CUNY system, uh, and he has had a hell uh, of a journey, a hell of a story uh, as someone who has been a prominent and loud voice advocating for Palestine. Uh, Danny Shaw has had uh, resistance. Uh, that resistance led to him being fired uh, as as an educator here in the CUNY system. And by CUNY, we're talking about the City University of New York. Uh, Danny was a professor in City University of New York, and he was summarily fired uh, because of his involvement, because of his vocal advocacy for the Palestinian people. And we wanted to give him an opportunity to come here in high school and tell his story and, and tell exactly what happened. Danny, welcome. Peace, everybody. Peace, Mark Lamont, and to uh, all the student comrades out there. Thanks for the invite. Talk to me about what happened. You are um, doing your job. You are and educate. Tell, what exactly was, was your job in the CUNY system? Yeah, I've been teaching at uh, John Jay College of Criminal Justice on uh, 59th Street, Columbus uh, Circle. We tried to rebaptize it with a you know better uh, name. I've been teaching there since uh, the spring of 2007 in the Latin American wow. and, and Latino uh, Latinx Studies Department. Uh, always been uh, vocal on social media and most importantly in the streets and in, in the movement. And um, yeah, they, they came after me because on uh, October 7th and beyond and all the way back since I was a teenager, you know, I was trained by the Palestinian liberation movement. I was trained in anti-Zionism. So, you know, on October 7th and the 8th and the 9th, I mean, we knew uh, those of us who uh, are, are scholars of this anti-colonial struggle knew. So I was on the front line saying um, genocide from uh, day one. And then I got doxxed on October 20th. So it, it's been a heck of a... When you say you got doxxed, break that down for people who don't know what doxing is. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the, the last six months, I was just writing an op-ed for some uh, newspapers, uh, some websites, and it's... Uh, Doxed, censored, and fired uh, for Gaza is the title of the op-ed. So when they dox you, they get your personal information, your address, your the, the your class information, what time you're teaching. So these different um, Zionist groups, which front as quote unquote civil rights groups, the Anti Defamation League, the Canary Mission. Uh, many of these different uh, groups that masquerade to be one thing, but they're in fact um, a battling ram against any dissent, any critiques of the Zionist project of Israel and their U.S. colonial backers. So they, they came from my head on uh, October 20th uh, on Twitter, um, you know, reaching hundreds of thousands and millions of people accusing me. It's the same old thing. It's what, uh, you know, Professor Norman Finkelstein calls the misuse and weaponization of anti-Semitism. So they have my face plastered everywhere in Israel and in the, uh, I guess you could call it a diaspora uh, of sorts, uh, that I am anti-Jewish and I'm anti-Semitic because I've stood up against this uh, uh, genocide. And then they had a full court press uh, against me, and they had thousands and thousands, I don't know how many tens of thousands of calls and emails harassing uh, John Jay College of uh, Criminal Justice, my employer. So I just found out now, it must have been uh, 10, 10 days ago, <clears throat> after 18 years, because of my, and this, this has nothing to do with anything in class, nothing to do with anything within my department, Latin American Studies, this is uh, everything outside of the university because of my social media and because of the wider uh, movement for justice for Palestine. So October 20th, you get doxxed. Your information's out there. People are calling for your firing. People are distributing your information that makes you vulnerable. 
the pressure is on at John Jay College, which is one of the colleges inside the City University of New York system. They um, they then reach out to you. H how do you find out that you don't have a job there anymore? What do they say? Oh, well, the president, uh, Carol Mason, doesn't even know me. She's never uh, contacted me. So it was uh, not this past weekend, the weekend before. And um, my department head, the chair of Latin American studies, is blowing up my phone on a Friday. And I thought it was going to be like the usual, like, you know, Danny, all this stuff you're doing is real controversial. I th and I was just trying to avoid the call. But then he's calling again. So I hit him back. We miss each other. Then it's Saturday. And I'm like, why is my boss calling me on a Saturday? But I was like, ah, it's, I'm all yeah, that's not that's not normal academic behavior. Ah, well, it gets better <laughs> because then it's Sunday and he's blowing up my phone. And I'd hit him back a few times, but I'm like, well, this, you know, they, they always critiquing me, you know, the anti-colonial beliefs and the work I do in Haiti. And so I was just used to taking that heat. But there was mutual respect, even if someone in the department is super this or that, a conservative. I thought it was all love because, I mean, you're talking about two decades in, in, in the trenches. And when he got a hold of me on the Sunday, I could tell real quick because he's like, Danny, I don't know how to tell you this. And I, I, almost, I it almost felt like he felt more pain than me because I wasn't naive. Like, I, I, I know how this stuff works. I mean, I remember you and CNN. I mean, this, this is what they do uh, with, with all types of hatred. And, you know, I received so many thousands of messages. You're a Nazi. And you're a Jew killer and just just so over the top. And it's so sad. And I know the sociology of Zionism. I mean, that's that's what I study. I'm a student of Finkelstein. I'm a student of, you know, Rashid Halidi was my professor at uh, uh, the School of International and Public Affairs at Columbia in 2005. So um, I'm, I'm not new to these struggles. I knew what I signed up for. But, you know, I never slept the same after October 7th. I mean, really after 1948, but specifically October 7th, you know, the insomnia, how many of my social relationships, my my friends, you know, I'm a 12-step, right? I'm a 12-step right? uh, recovery. I wear that as a badge of honor. It hasn't been the same since uh, October 7th, even, even in that world. Wow. So he's the, you get the I'm sorry call. I'm sorry. We have to let you go. We, we, we've been told by the president. Uh, like were names named? Was it like the president said you can't work here anymore? Was it the chancellor who who said this? Yeah, it was really unprecedented because uh, the department chairs always decide what staff is being reappointed or if someone has disciplinary issues that go that stays within the department. It's not an out of department issue. That's why you have yeah. a hierarchy and a supervisor. The department head. So it was uh, President Carol uh, Mason. Who's only been there a few years. She went out of her way. And she went through all of the reappointment paperwork for the summer, June, and then for the fall. And she yanked mine and said, Danny Shar is done because of his language uh, uh, around Israel. Because of his language around Israel. So this is helpful. So <laughs> according to your department chair, just to be clear, according to your department chair, the president uh, of the college said your name will be pulled from the list of uh, eligible professors to teach courses because of your language around Israel. What specific language um, did you use? What specific uh, words or uh, phrases or whatever uh, did they attribute to you? What did they say they found so problematic that after 17 years, you can't work there anymore? Yeah, 18 years. Don't rob me of a year, man. Uh, 18. It's all going to be worked out by the by the lawyers there. Uh, you know, um, saying what is, calling uh, U.S. foreign policy what it is, fascism. Uh, the, you know, the, the U.S. Uh, speaks with a forked tongue. Biden's saying that he's no longer going to uh, support this humanitarian, you know, this horrific genocidal violence and then he's sending billions and billions more in, in 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 weapons all the time so i was just on the front lines here in the bronx and and, and throughout the city um i used the word genocide uh, uh you know i'd say on october 10th i mean once netanyahu was bragging and boasting and putting it out there with, with the destruction they could cause blowing up all of gaza city 
I think it was very uh, clear to us. Um, and, and I was, I mean, the big thing is, and this is what I think is going to come down to in, in, in the courts and in everywhere else it plays out, you know, Zionism has nothing to do with Judaism. And to be an anti-Zionist, you know, a Zionist, according to my ideological, political, historical training, and there's a whole movement here, the, the, the liberation of, for the liberation of Palestine, you know, a Zionist is the equivalent of, uh, it's the KKK of the Holy Land. I mean, to critique the KKK is not to critique white America, you know? So when did they suddenly overnight say Zionism is the same thing as Israel and Zionism is a, they, they try to make it into a religion, which is absolutely ridiculous. But see, who's really been studying this for decades and decades and decades? Uh, the House of Representatives and every other bodies now pass these laws that if you critique Zionism, it's anti Semitic. So that's what's going to play out. And this needs to go to the Supreme Court, it needs to go everywhere because that's a historical. So, so this is interesting. So you mentioned some of the things you potentially said uh, that could have triggered them. Uh, was there a specific phrase or word that they specifically told you got you fired? Was was it the word genocide in particular? I know you used that. Was that just an example, or did they tell you you said genocide? No, they didn't. Nah, there's a lot of allegations. There's hundreds of thousands of words. I got a new book out on uh, Palestine. I mean, I've said Zionism is beyond a mental illness. It's a genocidal disease. I say that because I'm a student of the sociology of of Zionism. There it is. There it is right there. Um, so let me read this for you. This is a tweet that you sent out um, on the 16th. Uh, these Zionists are straight Babylon swine. We need to protest their neighborhoods. Uh, where is your humanity? Where? Why are you racist, arrogant bullies? You think you are better than others. Zionism is beyond a mental illness. It is... Uh, a genocidal disease. What's interesting for me about this tweet um, is that I actually got to it, uh, and I, I want to show people what I saw, right? So there's a there's a group called Stop Anti-Semitism uh, that purports to be about fighting um, anti-Jewish rhetoric, anti-Jewish hate, but they seem specifically to target um, people who criticize Israel. Uh, I've I've been targeted by them. I've seen other uh, cr critics of Israel targeted, um, and so they not only went to Danny's uh, tweet here, which you know which we can talk about, but they also then post his job location, right? Danny Shaw, Department of Latin American and Latinx Studies. Um, so they're inviting people to. At, the most generous read is they're inviting people to call his job and get him fired. A less generous read um, is that they're also are now letting people know his location, which now can make him vulnerable to physical attacks, can make him vulnerable to uh, all kinds of harassment. And we have people in our chat uh, right now, Danny, uh, including Bullet the Bunny, who, who wrote in, who talks about, you know, having people show up at the house, talks about people, uh, you know, doing things that are, you know, sort of dangerous. Um, these uh, these organizations are are quite troublesome. Um, not the ones that are stopping anti-Semitism, but I'm talking about the ones that are trying to silence any criticism of Israel and the ones who are using uh, these spaces as an opportunity to to dox, to threaten, to intimidate. I mean, this is this is something else, and this is something that we got to be very mindful of. Um, talk to me, though, about this tweet, because there are people who are going to look at this tweet and say, excuse me, I hit the wrong button there. I'm, I'm working out the tech here. They, uh, there are people here who are going to look at this tweet and say, um, Danny Shaw, you could have had a criticism of Israel, but when you say Babylon swine, when you say uh, we need to protest their neighborhoods, that you're not just talking about Zionists anymore. It sounds like you're talking about Jewish. There's no Zionist neighborhood. There are Jewish neighborhoods. Uh, they're going to say that they don't read your question. What, what do you say to people who don't read your statement in good faith and, and, and assume that you are going beyond just talking about Zionists or say that you're using language that goes beyond uh, what a professor should be using? What do you say to those people? Yeah, Zionism is uh, an ideology. It, it really, um, it had existed before, but it begins to have teeth in 1948 with the support of the waning British Empire and the burgeoning U.S. Empire. And Zionism is an exclusionary 
ideology. It's an exterminationist ideology. It says that um, this this holy land, this land we know as uh, Palestine, pa- Palestine, would be exclusively uh, for Zionists, for people, not just uh, uh, all Jewish people, but only Jewish people who said this is exclusively for Jewish people. That's the very definition of Zionism. So I felt completely comfortable with that tweet. For me, it would be the same as critiquing uh, the racist Dominican nationalists who abuse uh, Haitians every day within DR. It would be a, a, akin to, um, you know, I write a lot about this, the bold corners in, in the civil rights movement and, and, and white supremacy, um, you know, not just in the South, but like Malcolm said, when you cross that Canadian border, you cross the Mason Dixon. So for me, it was akin to critiquing the KKK, uh, Nazi groups, this whole thing, you know, suddenly, Mark, you've noticed this overnight. These everyone's a scholar now. Everyone says no. <laughs> Zionism means this and that. Well, in 1995, when I was marching in D.C. and I was marching in Times Square, and I knew what Zionism meant then, I know what Zionism means now. It didn't change overnight. So my language, you know, Babylon in 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 Kingston, it, it comes from the Rastafari uh, uh, movement to call the police. Uh, Babylon, even in Naiti Yokonzi Babylon Pupolicio, that, that's how they say it in Haitian uh, uh, Creole. So Babylon, I got that from, from Bob Marley. The Babylon system is the vampire. And then, I mean, shoot, people who are committing a genocide. I mean, I'm the one who's guilty of violence or provocative as, as a genocide occurs. So to me, it's extremely hypocritical. You know, I guess they're taking super offense to the word swine. I mean, we've been calling the police synonyms of swine, pigs for how many decades since the Panthers and and, and before. So they were looking, you know, and they, and, and when they, they grabbed it, when it had like, you know, two or three hits and they blew it up and they used it in that way. That was on like two weeks into the, the genocide. Um I mean, there were, there were so many different synonyms and then they, they went for that one. They thought they could go for the kill. And as a result, now I get called, you know, uh, Nazi every day and KKK and all the threats want to come find you. And this is a blood libel and this is our land and you're an anti-Semite. And, 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 and these people, quote unquote, the people indoctrinated by this uh, ideology are full of uh, hate. Whereas what, what is Palestine? Who is Palestine invaded? Well, what's Palestine's crime being indigenous to Palestine. What uh, are you looking to do now in response, right? I mean, there's the firing, but then there's the next step. You're, you're, you're an activist. You are somebody who resists every single day. What is your resistance going to look like here? What, what are you going to do? Yeah, um, fight it definitely, you know, uh, in the courts. Uh, with the First Amendment rights that we're supposed to have, because how much uh, language out there is extremely Islamophobic and anti-Palestinian? I mean, the the Zionist leadership, the Israeli leadership, has has has, has boasted about this genocide. They've, they've clearly stated their intent. So to me, it's extremely hypocritical. It's more about power and picking and choosing than anything. So that's the legal battle. Um, they took out my Twitter at the very same time, and Elon Musk, who says that he defends, uh, uh, you know, free speech. I went from being able to the capacity to reach millions and millions to overnight shadow ban, delisted. People can't find my account. So, um, prof, well, just break, break that down again because I don't think people understand the range of stuff people are experiencing. You still have a Twitter account, so they didn't take your Twitter, but you're saying that they made it hard. They 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 shadow banned you. So, well, yeah. Well, if if I look at my own tweets, there's this huge uh, cleavage as of uh, October 20th. I can't find anything on my Twitter uh, before that. It's just just disappeared, and mm-hmm. that's when I got doxxed. That's when they had a whole campaign against me. Published all these articles in in Israel that I was this and I was that and I was an anti semite, and and they weaponized all of that. They went after the college. My Twitter, suddenly, uh, a lot of people were hitting me up. We, we can't find you on Twitter. We can't retweet you. Where, where are you? And I was just like, you know, this is, this is bizarre. But we live in this age of, 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 of incredible censorship, incredible hypocrisy, incredible uh, double standards. Um, of course, Facebook, they had taken me out back in, I think it was uh, 2000 when I protested the, uh, 2020, excuse me, when, the, when I protested General Soleimani. Uh, being assassinated when he was in uh, Baghdad. 
um, TikTok, you know, not able to use this word, can't use that word. I mean, even before I go on a show, I'm measuring in my head. Can I say genocide? Am I allowed to tell the truth? Wow. Can I only go this far? So I'm even shadow banned in my very mind. And, and that's what they wanted. They want us to do that. that. For some people, that they believe that's the intention of all of this, is so of that they, they want to police us, so that so, so that we will eventually police ourselves, so that we just stop saying certain things, right? Um, that that's a that's a dangerous space to be in. How how as somebody who has some perspective and distance on this now, how do you see the role of social media in all of this? Again. Twitter is the place where they find you. Twitter is the place where they catch you. Twitter is the, the, the place where uh, that, that Twitter becomes your Twitter. Your Twitter account becomes the, the evidence that you're that, that you're an awful person who shouldn't work at this job. I mean, when, when you, you know, talk to me about social media and how that's playing a, a role in all of this. Yeah, it's almost like when they get you uh, addicted to oxycodone and then all of a sudden, you know, you need you need you need heroin. So you so addicted to the Twitter and that's where you get your information from or Instagram or TikTok. But then like the Chinese said, I mean, Xi Jinping said it best. He's like, these Americans talk a lot about uh, free trade. But when we produce something superior to them, they real quick to pull the plug. Cut it down. <laughs> <laughs> so TikTok, I mean. On TikTok, because I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm 45 years old, Mark. I got no business on TikTok, but they take me out on every outlet, so they force me, and I'm, a, I'm an exile on the TikTok. And TikTok goes quick. Like on Instagram, it take you years to build. TikTok just takes off. You reaching hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, no wonder they want to take it out. Um, but I think they've gotten us uh, extremely addicted. I mean, the first thing I noticed, and in, in to contextualize where some of that language came and, and and sometimes you know it has to happen for you to realize that they actually are watching uh, on that level but like for them first two weeks of the genocide um well the genocide began in 1948 but but more recently i didn't see like one zionist in my dms and in, in the comments it'd be like three or four like back in the day kind of in the early trump days You'd be beefing with your cousins and a friend from high school, and he would say, you know, Black Lives Matter is this or that. And you'd be in the streets all day. Like, well, what are you talking about? Riot. This is about people's lives. You know, where, where, where is this coming from? Yeah. Nah, it was very clear. We were in this lane, and, and the liberals were in this lane, and, and, and the right wing and the Zionists was in this lane. And it was like you couldn't even go from one lane to the other. So the censorship is extremely sophisticated. Yeah. And 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 then but as soon as I said something that they, they could pounce upon, they crossed many lanes over, snatched it up, blew it up to, to manipulate it. And then they could care less. They they only come after me when they think they can uh, manipulate. It. People ask me this. So I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to pass on this terrible ass question. Do you regret your statements, not at the level of you said something wrong or right? But at the level of strategy, like when after I got fired from CNN, people said, do you wish you had moved differently so that you could have kept that space in that platform to do the work you were doing? Is any part of you like, damn, I don't feel like I'm wrong, but like that classroom was a valuable space to do certain kinds of interventions. What, 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 do, you, what do you say to people who ask that question? Yeah, I think we have to keep seeing how uh, it plays out. You know, I'm somebody, everyone told me, like a lot of my boys I grew up with, they're like, yo, you got it made. What are you doing? Why would you, who are these people? What do you care about Palestinians? And I'm like, nah, I mean, and, and there was so much fear and there was so much confusion. So I didn't want to half step. I didn't want to vacillate because again, my relationship to the Palestinian people, I, I got friends like, Mark, it's not about, and you know this more than anybody, it's not about what millions and millions of people think. It's about what the ancestors and the mentors and the people that have been there, when, 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 the, when the police, when it's toe to toe, who stood by you? Those are the people that I'm loyal to. And we was, you know, we, 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 we were organizing in, under those circumstances the best that we could. And if someone made a mistake in, in, in that, I mean, what's the mistake in the context of a genocide? I mean, people ask me if I have any regrets. Yeah, I have a regret that I don't have a louder voice, a bigger reach, more mm -hmm. information. Um, I wish I, I wish I spoke more languages. I have many regrets, but you know how tragic that we have but one life to give against Zionism, against white supremacy, against colonization and occupation. What it comes down to, you know, I, I'm just the way my mother raised me. I'm an anti-bully. I think what's the definition of a revolutionary? I mean, there's many. 
but I'll never, I'll never. I'm the type of dude, I'm driving down 149 and they beat, they jump in some dude. I'm there. It's just instinctive. You don't stop to deliberate. Well, I, I could be kicked in the head as well. I'm just there. And, and that's just the class instinct. So, you know, I am who I am. And why, what do I have to apologize for? How many children are malnourished? How many children dehydrated? And at the end of the day, this isn't even, this isn't even about me. You know, this is about Gaza. And, and history will, will, will judge. I mean, every sociologist, every journalist, every historian should be producing around this. Everyone talks about the Holocaust from 1941 and 1945. I mean, what would you have done? I think this moment, October 7th uh, on, uh, proved to us what a lot of people would have done, which is diddly squat. They wouldn't have done nothing <laughs> because of fear, because of ignorance. Because so many of my family members or, or, or other people in my life outside of the anti-imperialist circles, they do not get it. They're in full denial. CNN, completely complicit, continues to, to say it's an Israeli war against Hamas. They don't mention the children buried in the rubble. They don't mention what, what home is left in Gaza. You know, if this was another country... Oh, Amnesty International and all these groups, but even those, even those liberal, even the UN. This is not some radical left-wing scholar. This is Antonio Gutierrez every morning, the Secretary General of the UN. These are the most liberal bodies ever saying to the world how many countries now have brought Israel to the International Court of Justice. Nicaragua has brought Germany, and, and shame on Germany. I mean, Germany's trapped between a Holocaust and a, and a genocide and then the extermination campaign against the Namibian people. You know, shame on Germany, three in, in basically a century. Talk to me a little bit about the higher ed piece of this, too. We've talked about the media. We talked about social media. Um, but the American university has been a hotbed of protest forever, whether it's the Vietnam War, whether it's. Uh, the Iraq war or whether it's what's going on in Israel right now, not to mention other issues. Uh, but as people are protesting, as students are protesting this issue, as they have many other issues, we seem to be seeing a very particular response. Students at Columbia University right now are dealing with uh, being kicked out of school. Uh, professors around the country, I mean, the same thing you're going with, going through right now, uh, we saw Stephen Salaita go through uh, years ago, and he was a tenured professor who was fired effectively for his comments, again, on Twitter, that they said were uncivil. We saw uh, a professor in the University of Texas system a few weeks ago fired for uh, his work, uh, his anti-Israeli uh, uh, occupation work. Uh, so when we see all of this and we see levels of surveillance that uh, university professors are going through right now, again, your case being a prime example of it. Um, what do you make of it? How do you respond to it? What does it say about the American university and the, its possibilities as a site of resistance? Yeah, it's truly, um, I think, shameful, uh, the repression and how it manifests, because so many of my colleagues, I mean, so, shout out to the economics department at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. They, they, they've come out and been extremely outspoken, and many, as many of my colleagues have. But Others have ran for the hills because they're so um, intimidated, and I know they have anti-colonial ideas. You know, it's 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 like this uh, this book you may have heard of, uh, Mark Lamont Hill, uh, Progressive Except for uh, Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 that's just what it is. And shout out to all of our uh, young sisters and brothers, really the 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 nameless, uh, the, the the anonymous heroes, the Jewish voice for peace and Jews for economic and racial justice and students for justice in Palestine. I mean, it's been interesting that Harvard and Columbia in particular on the front lines, if, if people don't know, Columbia students were subjected to a chemical uh, attack. I mean, can you imagine if the roles were reversed and there was an Arab student who sprayed some stuff on a, on a white person? I mean, that would be Fox News, number one headline, and CNN, and oh my God, they had, I mean, Trump's already talking about deporting them. I mean, that's the society we live in, and then these hypocrites have the audacity to talk about First Amendment rights. They have trampled upon the First Amendment. 
Uh, where are Palestinian rights? Where's the Palestinian right to have their voice in, in, in the media? So the war on Gaza is an informational war. It's, it's an economic war. It, it, it's a war using a hunger as, as a weapon. It's broken every uh, uh, rule of international law. That's what I got my uh, uh, graduate. I did my graduate work in international law. I mean, it's, it's, it's a complete uh, 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 joke. So anyone who talks to me about my words, it's just they just they just drooling from head to toe in, uh, in in hypocrisy. We have to defend these students. We have to stick to together. I mean, I mean. Um, They've stood up against the greatest odds. They just suspended students from uh, uh, Columbia. We should be praising these students. And, you know, and I always knew, I always knew when I was in Bosnia or I was in Germany and it was hashtag never again, never again. But when you study U.S. foreign policy, when you've studied the 76 year history of Zionism, when they say never again, they're talking about the what, what Noam Chomsky talks about, the, the, the worthy victims, because Palestinians have never been uh, worthy victims. And, and, and the ideological assault on Palestinians, and shout out to all of our Palestinian youth leadership and the Palestinian elders, I think we forget as we march every day in the civil disobedience with our Jewish sisters and, and brothers. Imagine if we're under pressure, if I, if I spoke to you, Mark, about the insomnia I was suffering from, we're talking about students and, and, and Palestinian leaders who are watching their entire villages, neighborhoods, families, generations extinguished from the earth. And then they're going to try to say that Heido at the University of Texas and, and, and my colleague Lisa, she was, um, uh, she was fired from Hunter because one student, a Zionist minded or indoctrinated student went on to her Twitter and on her Twitter, she says something to the effect of, um, if you're not speaking up against this genocide, I wonder where your humanity is something that I have put out there consistently. And she was fired. Wow. From the Japanese literature department at, 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 at Hunter College. So we need to let Hunter College and John Jay College and all these, you know, the universities, as you're, you know, indicating, have become a, a showdown. And if you look at all of the documentation, even from the State Department all the way through these different uh, Zionist uh, organizations that masquerade as civil rights organizations, they've targeted universities quite intentionally. What do you, well, first of all, do you think that it's worse now? I mean, you've been out here for a minute now in the university. Do you see a difference in when we were protesting the Iraq war, you know, in, in the odds? Do you see a difference now than, than when we were uh, resisting ten, even 10 years ago? Those are great questions. I mean, back in the day, like if uh, one of our people, like if an anti-war voice got on like CNN or MSNBC, well, back then it was just NBC, we would be high five. It would be like so amazing to actually hear a voice. Of course, now they've fired individuals like you who are speaking the truth. I mean, the censorship is uh, ridiculous, but we have social media. But we see what they're doing now with 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 social media. So I think it's a nuanced dialectical conversation. Um, I mean, it's McCarthyism 2.0. When's the last time we heard one positive word about Venezuela? When's the last time we heard one positive thing about Cuba, about Bolivia, about Nicaragua, about Zimbabwe, about China, about Vietnam, about Iran, about Syria, about Palestine? So yeah, it's it's a war. One third of the world wakes up every every morning under U.S. economic sabotage and economic war, aka sanctions and in 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 blockades. And where can we speak about these things? So yeah, yeah, Zionism and capitalism. Um, they, they walk shoulder to shoulder in, in, in lockstep, uh, really suppressing freedom of speech. It's, it's, it's very scary. And where are the people who are going to are gonna uh, stand up? Someone shouted out the, the poetry in the background. I don't know if y'all felt it over there in northern Philly, but here in the Bronx, I was with Garland Nixon. We were talking about uh, Haiti because I got back from Haiti when the earthquake hit on uh, Friday. And the stacks didn't fall, or I would have clearly been in trouble. But all the poetry, <laughs> all the poetry, Pablo Neruda and, and Atahualpa Yupanqui, it all just starts crack, uh, falling down. So that person distracted me. <laughs> no, 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 that's cool. That was April Silver, dope, dope, dope sister who, who apparently has laser hawk eyes uh, to see that. I, I see the prophet in the background now that she pointed it out, but I wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't have peeped it. Uh, give us some marching orders, man. What should we do? 
you know, as as faculty, as students, and just as everyday people who care about justice? Well, it's all about uh, Palestine. And, you know, I'll come to me uh, last. It's 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 just keep raising your voices. Um, the truth is always on the side of the oppressed, uh, as, as Malcolm taught us, on the side of the colonized, on the side of the occupied. This is asymmetrical warfare. This is not, you know, this is not human. This is not legal. This is this this is criminal. So even though they've come after us, you know, if more people stand up, right? I saw people back in October and November saying, "Dox me." It's an honor to be doxed, and you know, I, I like I like the spirit of that. Um, so number one, you know, keep keep educating on Palestine, keep organizing, because it's all about popular education. It's not about what I did just inside of the classroom. Dr. Walter Rodney taught us is what you do outside of the classroom. And I'm a student of that, you know, of that of that zeitgeist of that uh, spirit. We have a petition to get uh, Lisa and myself reinstated. You can go to my uh, Twitter at Prof. Danny Shaw. Definitely support the uh, social media struggle because it's popular educators nowadays. That's how we uh, uh, reach people. And we're going to have a town hall inside of John Jay that'll be uh, internal to the John Jay College of Criminal Justice on Wednesday. But then the following Wednesday, anyone want to take a road trip from uh, Philadelphia, we'll be having a, a, a protest um, well, we're all going to come together. Uh, we're in the streets uh, every day, led by our Jewish sisters and brothers and the Palestinian uh, leadership, uh, doing what we can to shut this uh, down because Netanyahu just put out a statement that they're going into Rafa. So if, if, if our hearts have been broken for six months and for 76 years, uh, what's on the horizon? You know, it's become an international struggle. Shout out to South Africa. I shouted out the Nicaraguans, the Irish, you know, that's where my roots come from. You know, it's the Irish and, and the Scottish and the poor English working class. You know, we, 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 we were abused. We, 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 we were bullied. Uh, Ireland has, has stood up one thousand Ireland, 890 years of British colonialism, which is, which is ongoing in different subtle hybrid ways. So, you know, Palestinian uh, Palestine is, 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 is it's humanity's uh, struggle. Those children that are dying, that those are all of our, children. That's the treasure chest of, of humanity that we're losing every day. And in the West Bank and in occupied Palestine, because Palestinians, even in Israeli proper, can't be themselves. And all my people in the West Bank getting getting raided, getting ambushed, their legs broken because of a Facebook post. This is surreal. This is surreal. So if you ask me, my only regret is uh, ever losing my voice for, for a millisecond. Because when I think about it, you know, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't be quiet. I couldn't live with myself. It's the way, you know, my mother was the ultimate underdog. So within my mother's story, every single mother, every abused mother, everyone who's overcome addiction, that's Palestine. Palestine is Tupac. Palestine is Dr. King. Palestine is the Black Panthers. Palestine is Mandela. And, and, and that's that's the poetry. I put out this uh, book, This is Genocide, 48 Poems for, for Gaza, because I just had so much. And, and again, I try to turn the it's so it's I always tell young people it's it's okay to be angry. It's correct. It's right to be angry, but it's right to rebel. What are you going to do with the anger? Where, where do we funnel all the anger? So, you know, I'm I'm really not worried. I, this, so many places already hit me up. Can you come speak at this high school? And you stood up. So the the, the people always show that love when you when you serve the people. The people show you that love. That is a fact, man. You Danny's been talking about. Uh, popular education is important, you know, since we're in a classroom space, popular education, when we use the word popular, um, it's not popular like we mean in the United States, you know, something that a lot of people like, but popular or, or popular uh, in the sense of the people. This is about uh, political education. This is about education for critical consciousness. Popular education is the education of the people to engage in forms of resistance, forms of class struggle, and ultimately liberation. So when we talk about popular education, we're talking about the struggle that takes place in uh, the CUNY system in this case, uh, but it's also the education that takes place in other spaces, including the space we're in right now at night school. But Danny, if you're not gonna be at the university, at least not John Jay right now, and we hope you're victorious in your struggle, we hope you win, you know, I'm gonna put all my energy and efforts into getting you your job back. Is that's our, that's our solidarity work that we have to do with you uh, as a comrade and as an ally. Uh, and as a brother in this case. Uh, but outside of that space, where else should we be thinking about the education coming? Because if these universities are squeezing us out, if they're silencing our voices, 
And also, many of them, the, the non-public ones, are operating in such a way that they're more and more exclusive, harder and harder to get into. They cost more and more. They deliver less and less. A whole bunch of our people ain't going to be in them anyway. So are there other places, other spaces where we should be doing popular education? Where else should we be teaching for radical consciousness, critical consciousness? consciousness? Where else can we uh, engage people in, in this work? Yeah, shout out to uh, the Midwestern Marx Institute. I've been teaching uh, Thursday night courses. Uh, I taught a course uh, last summer called Reform a Revolution, a Marxist view of revolutions past. So we could get uh, down and dirty with the Cuban Revolution and the Chinese Revolution, the Soviet Revolution, the Paris Commune, the Grenadian Revolution, the Sandinista Revolution. And uh, we, we, we know, I mean, this is a harbinger for what's on the horizon. They don't want any of us in any higher education, any type of education spaces like this are absolutely phenomenal i love what you've done with the night school of course uh when we talk about north philly we got a shout out dr anthony um, Montero. free school you know i take that road trip every few months that's that's my dude right there shout out to uh kate verde all the criollos out there um and yeah popular education like i was part of uh, a lot of my training like when you said it educacion popular I got that uh, training from Brazil, from that Paulo Freirian popular education, because um, I, I mentioned Dr. Walter Rodney, who was an amazing Ooh. professor, the Guyanese, you know, to us, he's the ultimate OG. And um, he taught in Tanzania. He taught in the, in, 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 at the University of West Indies. And in Kingston, what he said was, it wasn't just about what you did in the lecture halls. Were you in the streets? Were you grounding with your sisters and brothers? Is his, his book, Groundings with My Brothers, uh, uh, said. So that that's what I've always done. I've had something like 6,500 students uh, at, at uh, John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Never mind the students I've had in Brazil and in Haiti and me being the number one student of those national liberation struggles. But in Venezuela in 2019, we formed the University of Popular Education so mm -hmm. that we could do this at an international level for all of the Americas in an anti-colonial, anti-imperialist spirit for anyone who's not, uh, you know, ha 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 hasn't had the opportunity to study the Venezuelan uh, uh, revolution, the Bolivarian revolution and the Sandinista revolution, in Nicaragua, of course, the Cuban revolution, the, the pioneers. Um, look at everything that they're doing and, and, and the reason that they uh, demonize Palestine is the same reason that they vilify all of those revolutions or, or halfway revolutions in the case of Venezuela. So it, it's also an internationalist uh, struggle. And I, and I got that training and that's what made me uh, who I was. So I'm, I'm not going to stop. I got contacts in Argentina hitting me up. Can you come down here and do some seminars and lectures? So I feel like dialectically beautiful things are going to come out of this as well. Absolutely. You got people here in the chat telling you to come back here into our classroom and speak on Haiti. And we would love that, brother, whenever you can make that happen. Uh, we'd love for you to come back and build on Haiti. Love for you to come back and build on what's going on in DR. We'd love for you to build on all the work uh, that um, that you're doing intellectually and, pol and and sort of activist grassroots on the ground levels uh, because it's so important, brother. We appreciate you. I know you said that you want to focus on the struggle and you want to keep the the the, the attention outward. Uh, but is there anything you need from us right now as a community that we can provide that we can do to support you? Yeah, follow um, CUNY for Palestine. Um, you got my uh, social media. We'll be putting out the uh, uh, announcements of different uh, demonstrations and and letter writing campaigns and petitions. You know the whole the whole nine. So uh, everybody, you know, please plug in and, you know, on, on behalf of, uh, I, just, I just got back from Haiti seven weeks ago, you know, that's the Palestine of the Caribbean. I mean, Haiti is not the poorest country uh, in, in the hemisphere. It's the most misunderstood. It's the most colonized. It's the most exploited. So it would be an honor, you know, to, to bring the updates from Haiti because it's, 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 it's so forgotten. And the U.S. is now trying to plan their, uh, they're, they're getting ready for their fourth uh, military invasion and occupation in the upcoming weeks so the the haitian people are standing strong well they're standing strong they're resisting and we're going to continue to resist right here we're going to stand in solidarity with our uh, haitian uh, brothers and sisters uh as they resist not just uh u.s occupation but really global imperialism uh and even when it's disguised as uh international support 
peacekeeping security forces, I mean, even the United Nations, which continues to present itself as a friendly force to Haiti. We saw what happened the last time from everything from cholera to to random acts of not random acts to, to yeah. consistent acts of violence, sexual assaults. I mean, there's so many things that to, 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 that happens uh, that we need to be honest about and that we need to put a spotlight on. And so I want to make sure that we put a spotlight on that. But I am not a Haiti expert. Uh, that's why I want to bring some folk in uh, who are. And we tell everybody, go to that CUNY for Palestine uh, site. Uh, use that link uh, because we want to show solidarity. I, I did notice, yo, y'all, y'all didn't people ask any not thinking outwardly, but thinking what we could do for him. And he still gets us CUNY for Palestine. He's still talking about a collective struggle. He's still talking about what we can do as unit, not what we can do as individuals. That mindset is the mindset that gets us free. And that is one of collective self-determination, one of collective struggle, one of collective activism. And there's a reason why they target people like Danny. There's a reason why people like Danny are uh, even being surveilled. You know, and there's a reason why we have to make sure that this is in the spotlight because, you know, it's easy to say, oh, it's just one job. He can get another one or, oh, it's a corporate university. You don't need to be there anyway in these mainstream universities anymore. That's not the space. Just do your work on the side. It's easy to say that. Uh, but the reality is all of these spaces have to be contested spaces. We can't yield any of them. And in the same way that Danny was inspired by these this brilliant cadre of, of men and women who uh provided the popular education that he's engaged in right now, there are generations that need that education. There are generations that will benefit from Danny's impact. They'll, uh, they will they will benefit from uh, the kind of scholarly interventions and radical truth telling, because this is the other thing. This isn't about going in your classroom and just turning everybody into an activist. This is simply on some level about offering a truth. You know, if Danny... Danny, when, when you're when you're in your classroom and you're teaching, because because this is a this is something that people are going to say. And I get it every day on Twitter. I feel sorry for your students. How dare you in there indoctrinate your students? What do you, it's like, what do you think happens in my classroom? What 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 does a Danny Shaw classroom look like? T -t tell that to the haters. Tell that to the critics. Tell that to the skeptics. Tell that to people who just want to know. Yeah, we the de indoctrinators. What we teach is uh, critical thinking. I always tell my students. I say you don't have to uh, agree with me, but 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 entertain it, sit with it, critique it, provide the evidence, weigh you know weigh things, question your parents, question the church, question the mosque, question the synagogue, question everyone in authority, question more, question everything. Uh, you know we, we should never be sink of fans. Uh, we should never be yes men and yes women for for anybody. So it was that, you know, I'm a bibliophile, like Mumia, like you. I'm a, I'm a bibliophile, and, and I get that from my mom. You know, it all, it all goes back to my my mom. She's the true uh, uh, hero. Uh, I asked my mom a few few weeks ago, I was like, Mom, you, you going to finally write that book or what? She was like, ah, I don't have that much ego to have to write that book. You can write it. You know, that's your job one day. So wow. just, just that, that humility and that anti-bullying um, spirit. But my classroom, you know, off the top, it's a circle. It's all about a circle. Because what do I know about women's liberation? What do I know about black liberation? What do I, what do I about, know about youth nowadays? They always come in with the T and the new, and the new slang. And I'm, I'm just trying. I can't. You know, I'm 45. Yeah, I'm, I'm not cool no more. Something happened like 39, 40. I wasn't as cool no more. So well, you, you better than me, man. It happened to me around like like 32, 33. You know what I mean? You look up and you don't know the new music, you don't know the new, new slang. The I'll make a Dave Chappelle reference. I'll make a Dave Chappelle reference. Like you remember the skit he did on reparations just to introduce that combo? And they're like Dave Chappelle. Who are you talking about? And I'm just like, oh that's man. that old guy, right? <laughs> I'm referencing dead prez in the class. They're like, who's dead prez? Yo, oh, you sound like my class. But I was my class, bro. The the circle, and I think for me too, uh, the importance of being an everyday uh, uh, person with them, because you know when you got the tie on or the or whatever, they 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 feel intimidated. So they be intimidated on on day one and two, but forget it. By the third, fourth week, they talking to me like I'm a, just another human being, and we're quote unquote breaking balls back and forth. And I think when you're laughing. And you feel in the emotions. You forget that you're in college. You forget that you're learning, and that's when the true learning happens. And that—that's not something that 
President Carol Mason can ever take away from me or, or Zionism. Like the Cuban poet and songwriter Silvio Rodriguez, really the, the voice of the Cuban revolution. Like he says, yo me muero como yo viví. I'm going to go down the same way I've lived. You know, no no half step and no no compromise like like so many of our foremothers and forefathers taught us. So this this is the energy. This is the night nice, school energy. This is the energy I brought in for the past 18 years before that. I was teaching in Nicaragua in, in 2005 with the Sandinistas down there. So I consider myself like one of the luckiest individuals on earth. You know, no regrets, no self-pity, more sober than ever, getting younger every day. I, I'm just, you know, I'm just full of gratitude. All the love people have been showing me because these students know me for, since 2006, 2007. So students I've forgotten about are now lawyers and, and Jim St. Germain published this amazing book about juvenile delinquency and overcoming. So for me, it's almost like a, a reunion at John Jay right now with all the love they're showing me. Man, what a love is only going to grow, man. You just you just uh, have introduced yourself to a whole new uh, group of people who are going to be students of yours, who are going to be interlocutors of yours, who are going to be teachers of both of us, uh, who are going to support us uh, as we do this work and who we're going to support as, as we do this work. Um, so I'm grateful. Uh, for your time here with me, my brother. Uh, I'm so glad you shared your story with us. Uh, we're going to spread the word because people need to know um, what's happening in the university. They need to understand that, like many other faculty in the City University of New York system, you have been railroaded, you have been silenced, you have been erased, you have been smeared, uh, you have been disrespected, and we're not going to let it stand. We're going to fight, we're going to struggle, we're going to resist, and as history shows, we're going to win. Uh, Danny, thanks so much for hanging out with us, man. Thank you. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace. Thank you. Thank you. Family, you were just listening to our dear brother, Danny Shaw, Professor Danny Shaw uh, from John Jay College, who was fired from City University of New York, John Jay College in particular, uh, for being a, a loud and courageous and uncompromising voice on Palestine. This is not a surprise. This is not a new uh, but that doesn't mean that it's something we can stand, uh, sit down and, and not stand up against. So we're going to keep fighting.